Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. I'm Blake Oliver. And I'm David Leary. And we are thrilled to have Kwame Ajay joining us on the show today. Kwame is the founder and CEO of Appoint, an outsourcing company that provides virtual assistant and other services to accounting firms. What's really fascinating about Kwame's story is that he began his career as an accountant, but his entrepreneurial drive led him to start a point to help firms optimize their operations. And in our conversation, I'm looking forward to diving into Kwame's unique journey and the benefits of outsourcing for accounting firms and practical advice for how to do it. So Kwame, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm super excited and honored to be here. So there aren't too many folks who start as accountants and then become uh, the head of an outsourcing company. Mm. Uh, and so I, I have to say, that's the reason we wanted to talk to you. We get a lot of people who want to be on this show. And a lot of times they have no connection to accounting. But I thought, here's an accountant doing outsourcing, yeah. offshoring. Um, let's, let's, let's learn more. So I'm curious, like, mm. how did you get into this? Yes, it's a, it's a very good question. So essentially, I was, I was born and raised in Ghana and spent like the first eight years of my life of my life there. So there was a point in time specifically around COVID actually where remote work became such a prevalent thing that I thought there could be an opportunity here to leverage both markets between the UK um, and Ghana specifically to start with. So I just started off very, very small, nothing too crazy, found a few people in Ghana and a few companies that I've sort of worked with or have relationships with and and that's how it all began just a little hey do you guys want some extra support they'd be like yeah it'll be great everyone's remote now don't really have an issue with that um and i said yeah got some talent in ghana and it kind of just steamrolled from there and 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 essentially the the accountant brain in me was like this is essentially a consulting pnl right like you just as long as you manage this correctly you have a very healthy business here where you're essentially providing utility for both um, economies. And I just ran with it. Um, and it's been an incredible uh, few years, super fun, usual startup stuff you typically go through. But my experience has allowed me to manage all these things very, very well, because I started in the startup world. That's well, I say I started, that's where I got most of my experience in training in the startup world. Um, and it's been amazing for me. So yeah, that's that's sort of how it all started and, and why I decided to go into outsourcing. And then in the end, we're venturing out into other services. So yes, we do VA, we do accounting services, like accounts receivable, but now we're pushing on to do other solutions such as customer service, voice agents, and so forth. So you were an accountant before. Were you an accountant working in startups? Or Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I, I worked in startups specifically, uh, digital advertising, actually. Uh, hmm. So usually companies that are used to the Google buying marketplace um, data agency. So that's actually where I started. So it was an internal role. And I sort of started off as a bookkeeper and then sort of progressed and became an FD for those companies. So you mentioned a few different services you're doing. Mm. What is the biggest service that you provide at uh, a point? Right now is the accounting services. We've, those are the biggest ones that we provide, yeah. And what kind of accounting work are you doing? You were introduced yeah. You were introduced to us by uh, Michael Lee mm -hmm. at Reconciled. And I know you work with uh, his firm. Yeah. What do you do there? So we manage the accounts receivable. Uh, that's what we do. We partner with an incredible uh, technology company, uh, which basically allows us to plug into a Xero, QBO, NetSuite, any of these sort of ERPs and handle all clients' receivables through there. So essentially, you know, as someone who's had to deal with outsourcing companies before, there's usually a question of security, right? How mm -hmm. do I outsource this part of my business without you seeing my ledger, right? Because if I give you access to my accounting system, chances are you're going to see our P&Ls um, and that's not necessarily something we want to give you access to. So we part with another company. Uh, so we're completely detached from the ERPs. However, we see all the age receivables. And we use the technology to chase the invoices. So all our clients um, will basically log into the system and they can actually see the calls we're making, the emails, the text messages, the letters, when we last spoke to them, when the client paid, like it's a fully fledged solution. And that allows us to really run a fully effective um, accounts receivable uh, process for our clients. So as a firm owner, I'm going to use you to do collections or AR for mm. 
the clients I have and collect from the clients or their businesses. So we're collecting for your business. For me to collect for from my clients. Got it. Exactly. Exactly. And we can do that in several ways, right? It really depends on how you want us to chase because we're not a standard uh, collection agency where you pass on the debt and it's like they just sort of go gung-ho with like calls and everything we appreciate that with some of the clients you work with there are relationships you want to manage right some clients you're like you don't want to push too hard you want to be a bit more gentle because you have a good relationship with them no need to go too tough and then there are other clients where you feel you just need to be a bit more aggressive we can design workflows which will allow you, the client, to basically put the, the companies that you want in those specific workflows, and we chase based on what you want us to do. So we will follow a list of tasks. So say, for example, five days before the invoice is due, if it's a client that you have a great relationship with and is in this uh, nice chasers workflow, uh, we might just send one email just to say, hey, gentle reminder, this invoice is due in five days. And if that's great, if you're happy with that, um, then that's fine. If you want a more aggressive approach, maybe 10 days, you might say, call in the workflow, call this specific client 10 days before, because we know that they're usually a little bit late to pay. And the system will just keep telling us to do that based on what you and I agree as a workflow. Got it. So if I hire you as a firm owner, mm -hmm. you can follow up on my accounts receivable, but exactly. do you also follow up like for my clients like if my client needs help with this can you do that for them yeah we can do that for any anyone really we're not specific to uh just one company uh the good thing about the solution is that it can apply to as long as you have a zero or a quickbooks or a netsuite which in this day and age pretty much everyone uses as long as that exists we can it's plug and play um we design the workflows which can take probably less than two to three days um, and then we can basically get started from there. Actually, I want to, I just want to share some, some numbers with you, if that's okay. Yeah. Because I thought it would be very interesting to, uh, to give an idea. Of we we like numbers clients. on this. <laughs> we like numbers on the accounting podcast. <laughs> right. Well, it's an accountant who doesn't love numbers. Um, so we, the system we use measures something called collection effectiveness, right? Like how effective is your collection process going? And that is driven by the workflows that we would create together. Um, so one of the clients we started working with last year, their collection effectiveness was at 63%, which is basically saying your, your efficiency of collection of money sits at 63%. And what we were able to do was increase that to 78%. So what that means is that we just got in much better with the process that we designed through the system at collection of money. And as a result, DSO went from 23 days down to 12 days. So can you imagine what that means from a cash flow perspective to know that your day's outstanding is halved and you're getting money two weeks in quicker than you, yeah, you know? That's a whole payroll. Would. Exactly, right? That's a, that's yeah. a whole payroll. Um, and, and not just a whole payroll, like from a financing perspective, you know, unless if you're a company that does invoice factoring, you can save financing fees and interest fees um, on that as well. It, it just stretches mm. so much more than just being able to make your payroll on time. It also means you can reinvest money that you're getting in a lot sooner. But mainly, in my opinion, as someone who's been on the receiving end of chasing money all the time, it also protects your relationships a lot more. You don't you, you feel like you can continue to work with these companies because you're getting paid on time and everybody's happy, right? Because that's, mm. that's really what it is that we're all looking for at the end of the day. What I like about this is that it seems very simple, outsourcing mm -hmm. just a specific function because a lot of times when we talk about outsourcing, we're talking about taking an entire individual and mm. hiring, you know, a full-time person offshore, and then they, we have to give them work to do. Right. But this is, yeah. you're, you're just outsourcing a function for a company, just the AR. Exactly. Yeah. This. And, and the, and the benefit of this is, you know, technology is great. And I'm a, I'm a huge fan of technology. I think technology is only as good as how it's adopted in a company. And that's why the human element is still so important for us because we use that technology to drive the receivables for you, our client. So you can be as offhand as you want to be. You can just log in and just look at the analytics and see how we're performing. And you don't necessarily have to touch anything. Now, there are instances, and I'm sure we've all come across it, where you send a chaser and the client says, oh, sorry, there's no PO number on this invoice. Can you please put the PO number on there? What we can do is tag 
a member of the sales team within the system and say, hey, clients asked for a peer number, take a look at this email. And your actual, everyone else in the organization can be involved in the process in a way that is beneficial to them, right? Because mm -hmm. you don't want your salespeople being the first line of chase. You really want them to sort of be the escalation point. Um, and that's what this thing system allows us to do. So it's great. The human element plus the technology, it, it really does provide a lot for us. So outsourcing, like Blake said, instead of a whole body, just outsourcing a function of the business. Mm -hmm. like AR is a good idea. What are some other functions that make a lot of sense to just carve out and outsource a function? What are the functions of my business? Yeah, the accounts, sorry, the VA side of the business, right? So we also have virtual assistance uh, solutions. Now, what's interesting about virtual assistants is that not a lot of people have a complete blanket idea of what they actually do. And that's kind of a good thing, right? Because anytime I speak to someone, they say, well, what does a VA do? And my response is, well, what do you want them to do? What do you need? <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. It, it, that's sort of how it works because what I always say is, let's take a look at your bottom 40%, right? What is the stuff that you could really get rid of that you feel like is sort of dragging you down and how does that free up capacity for you? So we tell our clients, give us that as a job description and we can find someone to do that for you, right? So as in typically this sort of leans more towards senior execs and C-suite level people who have so much going on in their day. And so essentially you then, are, at that point, you kind of have two options, right? With that new free 40% capacity, do you take on more work or do you sort of use that and utilize it in your personal life because you finally feel like you don't have to burn the midnight oil working late into the evening because you have some, some additional support. So that's, that's another thing that we typically tell people. There's no, you, you hear the jargon words of diary management, inbox management, travel planning. It's all there, but I think we can get a little bit lost and to understand that it's very specific to what it is you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to tell you. So you're essentially buying back time by outsourcing sort of the, the data side of, of, of your day as well. I love the idea of having a virtual assistant. I've always been afraid of turning over my email inbox to mm. somebody, especially somebody I've never met. Uh, yeah. My email inbox is the keys to my digital life. Mm. So the, the, the security question is really important when I'm doing that. How do you address that concern? Like convince me that I shouldn't be afraid <laughs> to hire a virtual assistant and give them my email inbox. Yeah, I'd love to answer that question. Uh, so there's, there's a twofold answer to this. Um, the first one is when it comes to security, we operate on virtual machines with data servers local to where the client is, right? So nothing is stored locally on our, on our computers. Everything is stored in a data center that would be in the US, for example, right? So that makes sure that we're not as a process offshoring any data. So that's okay. from a security standpoint, that's how that looks like. The second part is an element of trust, right? Which is a very like psychological thing. I can't make you trust somebody. That's, a, that's, a, that's something that's sort of built over time. So what we always say to our clients that we're working with is start off small and build in iterations, right? So whatever you feel like, okay, this I'm more than happy for someone to take over. It might not be your inbox. It might be your expenses, for example. You know, just submit these receipts over to my accountant or just go in QuickBooks quickly and just put these in there for me. Nothing too crazy in terms of reconciliations. Just, just upload the receipts, right? Start there. That's perfectly fine because, of, you know, VA is a long-term relationship. That's really the best way to look at it. It's someone who's supporting you through so many different seasons of your business and of your life. Well, you start to realize that once you start to slowly build that trust in terms of seeing the output and what they can do, but also the relationship side of things, because right? you're going to talk to these people, especially in the first four weeks, we're like, talk to us every day. Like just anything that comes to your mind, just tell us uh, so that we know you, we understand you, we understand your business, we understand how to work with you. Um, gradually, you will get to that point where you will be like, okay, I can hand over the keys to my digital life because I feel like you've done such great work and I know you're on a personal level that everything here feels fine for me and then we can move on. And to be honest, 
that's a process and that's a process that every client who hasn't necessarily had a VA before has to go through. And we understand that and we're super patient with that. We're not, we're not pushy with these things whatsoever. How do you manage that or ensure that long-term relationship? Because I've done some VA stuff in the past and three months later, I have a different VA. Four months later, I have a different VA. Like how do you mm. maintain that long-term cohesion that you really need to have a good VA relationship? Yeah, um, it's really down to our hiring process. Uh, we're very, very, very rigorous in how we hire people. It's a four-stage process. And the last step actually is a meeting with yourself. Um, not necessarily because of the actual output of what they can do, but the relationship side of things. We want you to feel like you're a part of that decision-making process when you meet or when you're given the, the, the VA that you're working with, rather than a, here's this person, off you go. It's, no, actually, I've met two to three people. All of them are great, but I know this person, we just get on so well. We have similar interests and similar movies. I feel like I can talk to them on a personal level outside of work, right? And that's sort of what helps the longevity of the process. We typically, depending on how things are structured, so we either do say you want someone part-time or full-time. If we have a VA who... A VA has basically two slots, right? Two part-time slots. So they can work with two clients up to 20 hours a week each. And that's, that's the maximum. So we don't stretch them beyond that. So what that means is that there is that pure dedication to yourself to make sure the work is being done. But also from a resource point of view, we're not, you know, giving our team so much work to do that attrition suddenly becomes a problem where they say, hey, too stressed. I'm, I've got like five clients I'm dealing with. I'm supposed to manage a hundred, hundred hours in a 40 hour week. Doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Um, because I always say that we are in the business of retention, right? Like retaining our clients is far more important than winning them because when we retain, that's, that's, ex that's essentially where we manage to grow. Mm. Yeah. So virtual assistants, you said start small. I like that uh -huh. idea, but the commitment is, it sounds like 20 hours a week. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm so, you know, my concern is as a firm owner, well, you know, I want to, I want to give them enough to do, to be busy, right? Just uploading a few receipts once mm. or now, now and then may not, may not be <laughs> enough, but, yeah, but maybe yeah. the cost isn't something I need to worry about. Like how much does this cost? Yeah, it's, it's um, so if you look at 20 hours a week, it's $1,000 a month um, to begin with. Um, just to talk about what you mentioned before, to backtrack quickly about mm -hmm. the timing of it, like you know, how do I ensure that I can give someone this huge amount of work? Believe me when I tell you, over time, you will. That, that's the crazy thing about it. And, and I, see, I say this speaking from my own experience, that you will start to work on something and you go, hold on, actually, do I need to do this? Surely said person can do this instead of me. And then you pass that on. And then next, you know, three months later, you find that they're actually utilizing more of their time than you, than you actually expected. So it's, it's, a, it's an iteration game, right? And I think anyone who might tell you that a VA comes in and from the bat, they could transform your life. No, you, it's, a, it's a process. Just like when you hire someone new into your company, rarely do they have an impact day one but you find that three months down the line things look completely different to three months prior so that that's really the, the healthy way to look at it anyway but you i'll just I, have just, just i'll just have my i'll just have my va go, go respond to all of david's emails for me so i don't have to deal with it anymore <laughs> that works that works just uh just as an interesting um question to ask in terms of the the people that you come across and and just i want to go back to ar because that is as someone who's always had to deal with cash flows and fd um what are the sort of pain points you find that the, your network of people have is this something that is such an issue for them like how what's the story that you tend to hear i feel like i tend to hear is just accountants start just they get so busy they don't actually send invoices Right, they don't actually create the invoices. Never mind collecting. Like you just get too yes. busy to. Even myself right now, uh, somebody asked me if our ads were on track because they haven't received an invoice, and I'm like, I'm just behind on invoicing. Right, it's. I think. I think that's wow. almost a bigger issue than the collecting issue. Mm. But, and that's something we could have a VA help with, David. Yeah. Perhaps this is giving me a lot to think about. Well, there um, you go. 
But Kwame, I wanted to ask you something a little more personal before we go. Yeah. David yeah, yeah, was yeah. doing a little research on you and found <laughs> that, like, unless there's somebody with exactly your name yeah. and likeness, uh, you're an actor in addition to being an accountant and yes. a business owner. What? Yeah. And you have some pretty great credits to your name. Can you tell Thank us you. about what you've been up to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how it all started, I always loved it. Never necessarily pursued it until probably about six, seven years ago where I just thought, why not? Let me just see what happens. And that why not turned into a series of credits, as, as you've mentioned. Um, the, the most exciting one that I, I filmed, it came out this year, but we filmed it two years ago. Uh, was Masters of the Air, the final installment of the uh, Band of Brothers trilogy uh, that came out, Apple TV. And that was a, a wild experience. Um, everything about it was insane, incredible. The, the, the flight scenes that we shot. Gosh. What's we, your role? Yeah, what, what, who, who's your character in that series? Yeah, so I play a character called Joseph Evans Gordon. Um, I play a pilot, a Tuskegee Airman, uh, and in the um, uh, oh gosh, this is really bad. Now. I forgot the name of the uh, Ramatelli Air Base in Italy. That's where we were stationed. But my character's from New York, um, and the, the arc of, of the episodes that we cover was essentially how the Tuskegee Airmen were involved in that period of the war. And the thing that's crazy, I don't know, have you guys seen the show? No, but now no, I'm going to go I'm watch not. it. I do have okay. an Apple TV subscription. Yeah, so. definitely give it a watch. And, and what's, what's, yeah. what's always incredible, always stuck out to me the most about that fun period of time was how we filmed the flight scenes. So I don't know if you've ever watched Mandalorian or seen behind yes. the scenes of Mandalorian. You're right. So the, they the do... screen that wraps around. Yeah, so that's exactly how yeah. we filmed our flight scenes. So they built a plane on a huge simulator and we would sit in those planes and we would have the CGI wrapped around us so we could see everything. And then we just had some guys on the side with these in insanely looking computers that were rigged to the simulator and they controlled the entire flight thing. Um, and that's how we filmed all our, our flight sequences in the air. It was, it is great to be able to say that you're part of a Tom Hanks and, and Spielberg production. Not many people yeah. get to, to to have that, especially as a as a main role as well. It was fun. Absolutely loved it. Um, and right now, there's a couple of things on the horizon, which I'm nda so I can't necessarily talk too much about it. But for now, it's like both seem to be working. So why not? It gives another dimension to my life. So I can't complain too much. Well, you know, um, you could... Be like Ryan Reynolds, business owner, entrepreneur, actor. Yeah. You have it all. Exactly. Well, so. <laughs> I would love to be like Ryan Reynolds. Why not? <laughs> well, or who's that, the, the other last, accountant? The other accountant the that became the, famous. Uh, the Marvel oh. guy. Oh, yes. um, um, oh, Shang-Chi, yeah. uh, the legend of the, 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 the... Yeah, 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 yeah. He was at KPMG, right? And he got sacked. That's that's what I know of the story. He was doing... Yeah. He, was doing uh, he, he hated accounting. He hated Simu Liu. Similarly, yes, there he yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, he was, yeah, it's, it's possible. I mean, I, I don't think I'll be a Rhino Reynolds and own a football club one day, but uh, everything else, why not? I wouldn't say no to never that. Never say never. Yeah, yeah, Kwame, it has been yeah. so great getting to know you and learning about uh, what you do. And thank for you our guys listeners so who much. want, thank, thank you. For our listeners who want to uh, find out more about your company, potentially maybe interested in outsourcing or VA kind of work, uh, where can they go? Yeah, just head over to uh, appoint.co.uk. Uh, you can find a contact us on there. Just drop us a note um, and then, you know, my team will get back to you. Or, you know, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, just search my name, Kwame J. Reach out to me on there. I'd be more than happy to take any messages or questions and we can you know, jump on a call and then we can take it from there. And that URL for our listeners is A-P-P-O-Y-N-T dot co yes. dot UK. A point. That's correct. That's great. A and we'll point. have the link in the show notes as well. Thank uh, you great so chatting much. with you. Thanks. Thanks yeah. for taking the time. Appreciate it. Thank you both for having me. It's been so much fun. Thank you.